Hey everyone, Taylor and I are back on campus at the University of Washington. We just tried out some VR and AR projects made by students here at the Paul G. Allen School of Computer Science and Engineering. I had a great time doing the firefighter demo where you kind of go through this scenario of a burning building and you have to figure out where the victim is and get through barrels and pick up an ax. I tried it too and it made me realize why I did not go into that industry. I should keep my day job. <laughs> I'm falling off the ladder, Juan. Yeah, because it is a great no. Now someone who has had these experiences in real life is Jesse McCulloch, a former volunteer firefighter who now works for Microsoft Mixed Reality. He tested out the firefighting simulation himself. I think it would be a great training tool um, for somebody who's interested in the field or maybe to realize that they aren't really that interested in it. University of Washington senior Ryan Fang says that his team was inspired after they heard a talk by Professor Ben Locke of the University of Florida. Locke encouraged the students to use VR for social good. You're able to get a sense of what it's like to be in certain situations without actually being in the situation yourself. So it can kind of put yourself in the shoes of other people. Instructor Aditya Shankar says he encouraged his students to think of VR as a storytelling tool. It's really popular in gaming and entertainment, and I think that's a big uh, sort of medium for uh, VR. However, like, try to encourage them to use it for purposes beyond that box. So how can you use it to train someone or educate someone? Well, I would want to go out and like with my CS degree, like build applications like tools, technologies that have direct impact on people. Harshita Netty's group produced a project that simulates what it's like to drive drunk in hopes of discouraging users from getting behind the wheel after too many drinks. So we have input delay, which simulates decreased reaction time and then also things like motion blur. As the speed increase, it gets harder to control. The students only had 10 weeks to work on these projects. The main platforms they used were the Magic Leap 1 and the Windows Mixed Reality headset from Acer. Yeah, I think one thing that was really exciting to see was just how accessible VR was once we had the headset. With the uh, resources online and stuff, it's, it's not that hard to get into coding it. Now we're still in the early days of VR, but it is exciting to see all the students who are interested in the space. Right around us is Microsoft and Oculus and, and Valve and all these big companies that are the industry leaders in VR and AR. Really cool that Seattle's kind of the nexus of uh, this technology. Talent is right here as well, so it's kind of a win-win-win situation. This episode of TLDR was brought to you by ReachNow. Make sure to visit ReachNow.com to learn about some upcoming holiday deals. From December 21st through January 2nd, you can use a ReachNow car for five days at the cost of $250. It's holiday travel made easy.